Hello and welcome to the first of my champion guides. Due to people not understanding how Maokai can actually be fun, I'm going to help you all out by giving a tutorial on one of our mains who have long played in the jungle way before he was meta there. In this video we'll talk about the first clear possibilities, runes, masteries, items, ability breakdowns with examples of a few tips and tricks or how to maximize them, and finally we'll give an example that brings us all together. Firstly, you should definitely be starting E, so that you can place saplings at around 1 minute and 10 seconds. This means that when a cam spawns, specifically the raptors, you will have 3 saplings sitting in the bush ready to explode and do damage over time. Remember that the saplings live for 30 seconds, so if you're starting at a buff which spawns 3 seconds after the raptors, you should place them at 1 minute 13 so that you have time to drag the monster over to the saplings and get the maximum damage for your start. In case you didn't know, you should be aware that starting raptors is the fastest way to level 4 this season. Depending on your matchup, risk of invades, and if you're on the blue or red side, you can choose whether to start buff or raptors, but know that it is easier to do the raptors without a leash. But you shouldn't have any problems starting with the buffs if you choose to do so, as you can see I do in a few of these examples. You have an array of camp progressions which should be on your screen now, but raptors, then red, followed by blue, scuttle crab, and then ganking is the most common start on the blue side for me. For the blue side, my choices often change a little bit. Sometimes I like to do blue, grump, wolves and then immediately look to gank the mid or the bot lane if they've been pushing early. If I do get a very good leash along with my plants, I usually go straight to the wolves, do the red or the raptors, scuttle and gank. And these often depend on who you're against and who's going to gank early. For example, if it's an Elise going to gank early, I probably go straight to the red, get it and try and counter gank. But mostly I advise, of course, starting raptors on either side and getting that level 3, level 4 ganking going as soon as possible. Maokai has a very high CC kit, which is guaranteed to burn flashes and summon the spells early on, so make sure once you've done 3 camps in a scuttle, you're looking for that first gank already. Get saplings and wards into enemy jungle, and start to use your mobility and CC to get your team ahead. So before we get more in depth about ganking, let's have a look at the runes and masteries you need to be most successful on Maokai jungle. I've run these runes all season, and remember, you're a tree. You're slow. Movement speed is essential in Maokai because of your close range W and your slow base speed. You want to be able to gank fast and often. So let's start with the runes. We start with 9 times attack speed marks. Feel free to try magic pen, but I prefer the attack speed for clearing. We move to 4 times armor seals and 5 scaling HP seals. I feel this synergizes most with Maokai's early clear and adds some scaling beyond level 6. You can feel free to take 9 times armor seals and that should be more than sufficient. Add in 4 magic resist glyphs and 5 flat APs with a little extra punch to the first sapling clears and its Q damage. And I think you're good to go. Moving along to the masteries, we run a 12-0-18 tree, with a focus on battle trance for me, as most fights will last more than 3 seconds as a tank, so you're already going to be taking a ton of damage, why take more? Finally, in the resolve tree, runic armor is essential for Maokai's healing passive. Felis is of course very strong, but there isn't anything wrong with you having flash up more often for that engage, so if you want to take that, you can. For keystone masteries, ideally choose between Courage of the Colossus or Stoneborn Pack. I prefer Stoneborn as the 5% health increase is fantastic with a team enabling passive. It's especially important if you're going to be peeling for a Caitlyn for example, giving her that extra heal that she could need. If you can see that you're going to be a hardcore engager and your team has enough peel, feel free to take charge of the classes. I usually run Stoneborn though. Let's now get specific and break down some of the abilities and some unique ways you can use them. Q named Bramble Smash is your primary ability that you should max first after the E nerfs which came before and of course having more nerfs next week, but that won't really change how you play him at all. It has a low cooldown when maxed with your CDR. It's a full displacement ability and when W is down and you want to flash engage, feel free to do so and do what I did here, you could flash beyond the enemy and knock them back into your team. Anyone who isn't close enough won't get knocked aside but will still be slowed by 99% for a short duration, or 0.25 seconds to be specific. In an ideal situation, you can knock multiple people back like I do here. And don't forget it's a knockup, so you can save your Yasuo each time while using the advanced sapling placement as well. W named Twisted Advance is a point and click, close range CC ability and you will always want to be able to get into range to use this around your Q, around your ult and around your sapling. Also, position on the other side of a champion when you use your W, so that afterwards when the CC has expired, you can use your Q right afterwards and knock the enemy in the direction you desire. It's a guaranteed lockdown and amazing for engages, for peeling and for skirmishes. You can use it to escape skill shots, you can use it to chase down kills, as well as use it so fast you get stuck with people using flashes or dashes. That's either a good thing, as with this Talia flash, or a really bad thing, but still a good thing with a Caitlyn. I killed her but I died. 
And of course, sometimes you will go on a magical journey, even if you don't want to. E is of course your sapling toss, and I like to max the second because of the damage scaling, even though you get cooldown reduction by maxing the W, so pick and choose which one you prefer and which to place down more. I love to use these for vision around the map, and as you transition to the mid and late game, having those surprise saplings in a bush to frighten the enemy and of course maybe kill them is, is quite fun. Use these regularly in your ganks to keep the enemy from making an escape for extra damage or simply for warding around the area to prevent any further counter ganks. If you build full AP support still, or simply have your team around, you feel free to stack saplings in a bush and surprise the enemy, it's still really funny. With your full kit follow up, it's usually a guaranteed kill in those situations. Also use your sapling toss to zone areas when taking objectives to prevent steals and to keep the enemy from engaging. I always do this when doing dragons especially. Red side is of course better, but you can do the same when you're on blue side. Finally, the most unique part of Maokai's kit, the ult. The ability has some mixed reviews since Ryan released it with a rework, but it still has many uses. Primarily, it's a disengage ult, but it can also be used in non-teamfight scenarios to lock down kills and ganks and counter ganks, as well as being an amazing engaging device, chase down ability, if you get to use the timing and the range correctly, which comes with practice. Remember, the ult speeds up the longer it's active, and the amount it stuns is longer the further down the enemy gets trapped. So practice will make you quite deadly with this ult. You can also separate the enemy from themselves, allowing you to focus down one enemy. And finally, it's also great when sieging, as you can simply use it to zone the enemy away from a tower and then gives you free objectives like towers and inhibitors. Okay then, let's look at ganking with Maokai. He thrives on decisiveness and aggression, as well as reaction and counter ganking. If you like being able to dictate the pace of a game and you like to snowball your laners, this is definitely the champion for you. With movement speed quints and early moby boots, you can move around the map very quickly and make it your own. So most of the time you will use your W first followed up by your Q. You want to use your CC and stack it on top of each other because all your spells, including the ult, bring some kind of CC. So you don't want to waste it all in one go. A standard combo can be going in with your W, auto attacking, using your E, and then queuing when the W timer wears off. Usually this is enough time to secure the kill with added damage from the E. If you are near a bush, all the better as you can use the empowered sapling for extra burst ticks of damage. We'll talk about the old usage shortly though. If you know an enemy has flash or a dash ability and you have the right ganking angle, you can use your Q first, place an E ahead of you, or what I like to call advanced sapling placement, so that when the enemy flashes or dashes after your Q or W, you can slow them, catch up and get ready to use another rotation of your spells. Remember that flashing and using your W very quickly is a core mechanic and oftentimes the enemy simply can't react in time. So be ready, let your laner know you're coming with a flash and let them know you're coming with a flash W. And of course be ready to follow up with your Q, your E and using auto attacks in between. You also have the ability to use unique angles to tower dive due to your HP, tankiness and healing ability. With your runes you'll be able to counter gank very quickly also and usually very well because the enemy has used their dashes and flashes and spells already. Maka also has an amazing chase down ability, so don't abandon situations where you can flank and gain even more advantages for your team. Okay, let's talk items. Firstly, don't forget that Maokai's passive heals him for certain amounts depending on his level and how much health he has, so items like Spirit Visage are very valuable, albeit not crucial if you have to play more supporty role or actually in support. Maoka has a huge array of item possibilities, but for me, the core items are Cinder Hulk, Righteous Glory, Spirit Visage, and of course Gargoyle Stoneplate, which is bound to have a price increase or some kind of nerf because it's really goal efficient along with the Righteous Glory. So what's making Maokai so strong is the buffs to Cinder Hulk as well as very, very affordable and strong itemization. Finally, a few niche items I like, and it's very good if you have a strong magic damage team as Abyssal Mask, and also Zeke's Herald if you need to be more of a peeler. And that's a thing, you know. You are a Maokai, you won't always be this hard engaged with Courage of the Colossus that wins the game through a smart W and ult and so on. Will happen a lot, but on occasion you'll need to peel for your ADC and keep them alive. So recognize how you are needed to play these teamfights. I do prefer Moby Boots for a highly active playstyle and so I can gank, counter gank and counter jungle quite often. So feel free to buy boots of your choice depending on the game. I will sell my Moby Boots later for resistance boots if it gets that far. Make your decision, but for me, Moby Boots are so important for getting around the map quickly. Let's pull this all together and use it in a final example. We've just taken top and hip, and most teams would want to go back or ward up and get ready to take the Baron. But we have good HP and we have good mana resources. I ping my team to stay in this bush that I've already cleared, and I place a few saplings. 
A wandering hail gets instantly destroyed, but of course my W is on cooldown now. I see Ari user alt, so what I do is I follow up in order to catch the brand out, because he was the main damage dealer. I see he would actually get away from my ult because of the Lula protection, so what I do is I flash Q him in order to slow him and knock him up, which will negate any movement he has and allow my ult to catch him, which of course it does and my team kills him. We were able to easily take the rest of the base and we won the game from this. One full range use of all of Malachi's abilities can completely turn a game or further snowball you to a win. Use your E to poke as well, especially in these sieging situations, and always be ready to punish people out of position with your kit. He's a strong champion and can be very fun to play when used to his maximum ability, and you can see he has fun and flashy plays as well sometimes. If a flash W or flash Q can really be fun to do. Okay then, so I hope this tutorial helps you learn about Maokai and further appreciate his kit and not think of it as just a boring tree. Let me know what champs you'd like to see next in the comments below. Smite the like button if you did enjoy this, subscribe for more League videos and tutorials, and as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.